Have you ever wondered if all the talk about green buildings really results in conservation, better air quality, and other factors we associate with being green? What about how green construction relates to safe construction? Efforts to build new buildings and adapt existing buildings toward a goal of green are all around us. We see them not only in our downtowns, but in suburban town centers, office parks, and wherever there is an opportunity for buildings to play a role in our public health and welfare. Frequently, we hear our own elected officials talk about ways our communities can become more green. One tool in achieving this goal is to develop laws that require building construction to produce green results. Until recently, the guidance that jurisdictions use for other aspects of regulating construction was missing from the discussion on green codes. This required creative thinking without uniform compliance tools. These efforts have not had the benefit of an approach that integrates with the codes that are on the books in every state. The codes that are being used around the globe as a resource for building a safer world. Those codes, the International Codes, now have a new member of the family. It's called the International Green Construction Code. Known as the IGCC, it is designed for those jurisdictions that are ready to do more with their building codes, looking at how codes can be used as a tool to promote safer and more sustainable communities. Why now? And why another I-code? We know that tools like rating systems and industry standards have helped bring focus to the challenges of green construction. Thanks to these efforts, we see exciting new approaches utilizing new technology and educating all of us on innovative design elements. These tools continue to serve as useful voluntary measures. But they are not written to be used as codes. The IGCC will offer a baseline mandatory code that will establish defined levels of green construction for commercial buildings in a way that builds upon the existing family of I codes. Not every jurisdiction is ready to adopt such a code, but when they are, they now have a tool that is designed to work with their existing codes, be usable and enforceable by their code officials, and link together the issues of green design, building performance, and building safety. The IGCC public version is the product of a 28-member Sustainable Building Technology Committee, known as the SBTC. The SBTC and its supporting work groups of subject experts span the disciplines of code officials, architecture, the materials industry, academia, science, engineering, and environmental advocacy. A series of five public meetings and over 200 working group conference calls serve to distill concepts and challenges into a workable public version that is available now as a resource tool for those jurisdictions planning to enact or amend green codes in the near term. In August of 2010, an IGCC public comment committee considered over 1,500 comments related to public version 1.0 at public hearings in Chicago, Illinois. The committee's decisions have been incorporated into public version 2.0. Public version 2.0 of IGCC contains 11 chapters, plus a chapter on referenced standards and four adoptable appendices. Within this document is a series of regulations addressing materials, air and water quality, energy conservation, site and land use, and commissioning. An innovation in this code is contained in Chapter 3, which features a set of jurisdictional requirements that allow a jurisdiction to customize their code at the level they wish to achieve if they want to go beyond the baseline objectives of the IGCC. In addition, Chapter 3 also contains a list of over 50 project electives that project designers can select after the jurisdiction sets an elective minimum for each building of between 1 and 14. The flexibility of the code combined with the integration with the family of I-codes provides a unique and serviceable set of regulations for communities of all sizes and economies. Let's take a short walk through the highlights of the IGCC. Chapter 1 is entitled Administration. In this section, the IGCC addresses the following topics. The scope of the code, much like the International Building Code, includes all commercial buildings. Residential buildings over three stories in height are also covered, 
but residential buildings under the scope of the International Residential Code are not. The intent of the code, including conservation of resources, materials and energy, the employment of renewable energy technologies, improved outdoor and indoor air quality, and an emphasis on the linkage to building operations and maintenance. Referenced codes and standards, including the function as an overlay to the family of I codes and incorporation of the administrative requirements of the IBC. Chapter two is entitled definitions to ensure a common understanding of the many terms that may be new to users of the code. Chapter 3 is entitled Jurisdictional Requirements and Project Electives. In this chapter, we see the menu of jurisdictional requirements that allow jurisdictions to draft their version of the IGCC to their specific needs. Specific sections include jurisdictional requirements that reflect priorities related to sustainability, including prohibited land use areas such as flood, conservation, and agricultural areas, permitted uses of greenfield sites, site location related to high occupancy low emission vehicle parking light pollution from building illumination stormwater runoff and landscape irrigation and water and energy efficiency thresholds over fifty project electives that go beyond the minimum mandatory requirements of the IGCC to encourage green practices such as those that are otherwise difficult to mandate, such as encouraging development of brownfield and infill sites. Those that encourage higher levels of building performance. The selection of jurisdictional requirements is determined by the jurisdiction itself. Similarly, the minimum number of project electives is determined by the jurisdiction, with the project's design professional selecting which of the over 50 electives will meet the jurisdiction's numeric goal. Lastly, jurisdictions will also have another option for their jurisdictional requirement. ASHRAE Standard 189.1 .1 is available as an optional path within the IGCC. Chapter 4 is entitled Site Development and Land Use. This chapter addresses how a building can positively impact the land it occupies, as well as reduce the negative consequences that its presence may have on existing natural resources. Specific sections address preservation of natural resources, including surface water, agriculture, vegetation, and topsoil, stormwater management, landscape irrigation, and water quality protection, erosion control and soil management, flood hazard area building limitations, transportation impacts, including walkways and bicycle paths, HOV, low emission, hybrid electric vehicle parking, heat island mitigation using site paving, minimize solar reflection building shading, and vegetative roofs, site lighting with ratings for backlight, glare, and uplight, subsurface irrigation for gray water systems based on IPC Appendix C, project electives for the chapter categories. Chapter 5 is entitled Material Resource Conservation and Efficiencies. This chapter acknowledges the need to regulate how building construction and operation uses materials and addresses waste. Specific sections include material and waste management including recycling or salvage of construction waste and recycling of post-occupancy waste, content properties of materials used in construction including percent of recycled, bio-based and indigenous materials, the service life of building materials and requirements to plan for dismantling reuse. Moisture control and material storage and handling. Prescriptive and performance based straw bale construction requirements. Project electives related to material conservation. Chapter 6 is entitled Energy Conservation, Efficiency and Atmospheric Quality. This chapter contains the most content of any within the IGCC and is a reflection of the advanced degree of information available on this topic, as well as the desire to fully integrate with and build upon the International Energy Conservation Code, IECC. Specific sections included in this chapter are 
energy performance, peak power, and reduced CO2 emissions, energy use and atmospheric impacts, energy metering, monitoring, and reporting, automated demand response infrastructure, building envelope systems, building mechanical systems, building service water heating systems, building electrical power and lighting systems, specific appliances and equipment, building renewable energy systems, energy systems commissioning and completion, jurisdictional requirements and project electives. Noteworthy for this chapter is that in addition to prescriptive and performance-based compliance paths, outcome-based and energy use intensity, known as EUI-based compliance paths, are also provided. This chapter also includes comprehensive provisions for calculating annual energy and CO2 emissions based on region-specific effectiveness and CO2 emissions rates that have been substantiated by data from utility operations. Chapter 7 is entitled Water Conservation and Efficiency. The Water Conservation section specifically mandates a minimum of 20 percent reduced consumption of potable water along with optional jurisdictional requirements of 30 percent and 40 percent reduced consumption for those wishing to exceed the code's minimums. More specifics include fitting and fixture limits on flow rates and consumption per cycle, hot water distribution efficiency, consumption limits for HVAC systems, efficiency requirements for water treatment systems, ornamental fountain and water feature usage, non-potable water use and application, rainwater and gray water installation and repair requirements for collection and distribution, reclaimed water systems, project electives for the chapter categories. Chapter 8 is entitled Indoor Environmental Quality and Comfort. Specific sections address building construction features with facilitation of operations and maintenance relative to indoor air quality management and air handling system efficacy, asbestos use prevention, material emissions and pollutant control including limitations of chemical emissions from materials and systems, fireplace, fuel-fired appliance, and radon regulation, HVAC systems, including smoke migration prevention and pollutant isolation, sound transmission limits for interior and exterior, and building material classes for high noise locations, and daylighting, Chapter 9 is entitled Commissioning, Operation and Maintenance. This chapter is critical to linking design elements and systems functions with overall building performance. Approval from code officials is not mandated for post-occupancy commissioning. To assist with code enforcement, this chapter contains a comprehensive table which, similar to IBC Chapter 17, Structural Test and Special Inspections, identifies all commissioning requirements, and cross-references detailed commissioning requirements to specific other IGCC chapters. Specific sections include commissioning requirements similar to IBC special inspection provisions occurring pre or post occupancy or both. Post occupancy reports filed with code official. Building operations, maintenance and owner education including required manuals for both operations and maintenance as well as building owners. Chapter 10 is entitled Existing Buildings. Sections in this chapter address additions and or alterations, change of occupancy and sale triggers, jurisdictional options to offer IGCC compliant evaluation. Regulation of historic or relocated buildings is deferred to local requirements. Chapter 11 is entitled existing building site development. The sections in this chapter mirror chapter 10 existing buildings with the provisions being specific to only the site and not the building itself. Chapter 12 is entitled referenced standards. The IGCC utilizes the same format as all the I codes with the last chapter of the code used to identify the promulgator, title and addition year of the standards referenced in the code. 
IGCC appendices are not part of the code and only apply when specifically adopted by the jurisdiction. The appendices address the following topics. An optional adopting ordinance. Greenhouse gas reduction in existing buildings. Sustainability measures in existing buildings. Post certificate of occupancy violation enforcement procedures based on the IPMC. Specific details regarding each IGCC chapter and its features are available now on the ICC website at www.iccsafe.org forward slash cs forward slash IGCC. Public version 2.0 will be revised at code development hearings and final action hearings in 2011. The 2012 code will be issued in early 2012. Please join us in providing the best information for greener communities. The IGCC is safe and sustainable by the book.